What is up YouTube? This is NickF1227 and today we're going to take a look at my home network rack. It's going to be my network tour of 2016. So in front of you guys is a LAC rack. It is three IKEA tables that are screwed together with some Home Depot metal L brackets. Um, and inside of it is all my networking equipment. Uh, there's a monitor and a keyboard and on top there's a uh, wireless solution. So. Um, I'm going to show you guys what's on the bottom first, then I'm going to bring you guys up top and show you the rest. So, if you look all the way to the left, I have a CyberPower 1500 PFC LCD uh, battery backup unit. So, it is one of the PFC models, which means it's capable of supporting a power supply that has active PFC, which means basically any modern PSU. So, if you hook up a computer to it, it's not going to freak out, basically. Uh, it works really well. I've lost power with it once or twice, and it's kept up everything up and running for about an hour. So it's it's pretty nice. Um, it's well worth it. I got a good deal on it on Black Friday, but even at the regular price, it's still a very good, high quality power supply or backup power unit. So <clears throat> looking back to the actual rack, on the bottom, we're gonna start on the bottom, work our way up, is my PF sensor. I'm sorry, my uh, FreeNAS server. So in there is it's a norco chassis it's a I forget exactly the model number but it is a 4u short shallow mount short depth it's about 15 inches long the rack is 19 inches long uh case so unfortunately it doesn't have hot swap pool bays but inside of there there are six uh drive bays and i have all six filled with um some hitachi two gigabyte um uh, ultra star uh 7k 3000 uh, hard drives, which are supposedly some pretty good ones. I have actually bought them refurbished. I bought them back in October. I haven't had any issues with them so far, and hopefully they continue to not disappoint me. So, um, <clears throat> it's running FreeNAS, like I said. It has a Core i7, which unfortunately does not support ECC RAM like it's supposed to in FreeNAS, but it actually works well enough for me, and I haven't had any corruption issues, and I've used many I've had actually three FreeNAS servers for the past three or four years now, I think I've upgraded almost every year, um, that none of them have ever had ECC memory, and I mean obviously the, the pools have only existed for about a year, but I haven't had any issues with them, and I've as data migration between them, I haven't had any data corruption or anything like that, so uh, with FreeNAS you're supposed to use ECC RAM if you have the ability to use ECC RAM. I actually just got this Core i7 for free, so why not? Um, it's using an Intel P67 board. It's the one with the skeleton on it, the skull logo on it. I forget the exact model number. Um, it's using 32 gigabytes of crucial memory, so it's actually got a decent, a decent amount of memory, which FreeNest loves memory, so uh, it's a cool setup. I get read and write speeds um, with the 6 drive RAID Z2 pool of like 500 megabytes per second read and write sustained, um, which I think is pretty cool. It's pretty fast. I don't have any issues with it. I could edit videos from the NAS or in, while at the same time I'm serving videos with Plex and other things. So it works pretty well. I definitely am super happy with that implementation right now. Okay, so above that, we have a 2U case for Rosewell. Um, it's like literally probably one of the cheapest cases you could buy, but it works pretty well for the needs of what this is doing. So inside of there is a cheapo ASRock um, H97 motherboard, with which is designed basically to overclock G3258s with, I'm using, excuse me, hiccups. I'm using it with the cheapest Celeron that Intel makes. I think it was like G1820 or something like that, like $30. Um, it's a 2.7 gigahertz, I believe, processor, dual core. Um, it's running an Untangle server. So what Untangle is, is basically a UTM that's kind of free and kind of not free. So I'm using it f basically because I really like the implementation of its uh, firewall and its, um, what's it called, the uh, intrusion detection software. So I'm able to filter out some, make some rules and stuff like that based on what shows up in the logs um, as to like what's going on, people doing like port sweeps and stuff like that. Whatever hits, it logs it, and if I see a bunch of something in the log or something that I don't like in the log, I can just block it so going forward no nothing else will show up that way and it'll just show up as blocked in the log. 
I really like that implementation of it. It's kind of the same thing if you run um, Snort in PFSense. I just like the UI much better. And since I'm only using it for that purpose, it works pretty well. You can also do ad blocking with it. It works really, really nice. Um, I have an open VPN server running on it, but I'm not really using it right now. Basically, I'm going to be using that going forward for Steam, uh, Steam in-home streaming from like the internet. And I will be talking about that in a video in the future. So above that, if we want to move on, is our Ubiquiti Edge Router Pro. Um, now, I know there's only two things plugged in there, so it looks kind of ridiculous that I have an eight port router that I'm only using two ports of, but uh, Ubiquiti recently imp implemented FQ Coddle into their um, line of routers, okay? So, unfortunately, DDWRT doesn't support FQ Coddle, and, uh, or it does, but I don't want to run it on a regular router, and unfortunately, PFSense doesn't run um, FQ Coddle at this time. So, I'm using uh, the Smart Queue Management System, which is based on FQ Coddle in my uh, Edge Router Pro. So I had an Edge Router Lite, it can only do that up to about 70 megs per second. This can do it like over 300, and I have a 150 meg line, so hopefully that gives me some future proofing. I can keep this for a few years and still be getting like zero uh, buffer bloat, um, which is something that you guys could research about. It's basically when you use your internet connection to the, its fullest potential you will get ping spikes no matter what you do. So when I'm streaming videos on Plex and trying to play a game or something like that, I have no issues with buffer bloat. So above that is our fancy and exciting 10 gigabit, uh, two port 10 gigabit switch. It is a 24 port gigabit and two port 10 gigabit um, MicroTik Cloud Router switch. It's the CRS226. 24G 2S RM. So it's the rack mount version that paid a little extra for it. Um, it has a cool little LCD screen you guys probably saw before it turned off just now. Um, I use it to connect my home network to, <clears throat> which is all like, with the exception of my server on the bottom, the PFS or the uh, FreeNAS server and my computer. Those are both connected at 10 gigabit and everything else is connected at 1 gigabit. Okay, so I'm going to be adding more stuff. There's right now only four things plugged into it, but. Uh, basically, the idea is I need to move things fast when I'm <clears throat> video editing or if I'm transferring files and that kind of stuff. So it's really good. Uh, I love it. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, I did a full write-up on this on Tech Syndicate, which I will link in the video description. Okay, so above that, in the second layer of my rack, you can see I have a cheapo Dell monitor. Basically, I remote desktop and everything, but if I need to look quickly at something or if I'm reinstalling it, re-imaging something, it's nice to have a monitor. There's a wireless keyboard and mouse up there, too. And then, excuse the shaky part of this video. On top here, I have a Netgear Nighthawk R7000 with some crazy 9 dBi antennas. I don't know if those actually help anything at all, but I thought they were cool and they were cheap. I got them for a deal on eBay, so... That is my wireless solution. It is a 1900 AC product, it, so it's a mature design. It has a good um, DDWRT support, and that's connected to another R7000, which is in my garage, which is used as a repeater. So, so far, this wireless solution is working pretty good. I kind of want to move to a Ubiquiti solution at some point, because the new AC light stuff looks really good for the price. It's just that it's not an upgrade and it's not necessary, so uh, we'll see how things go with that. So that has been my network tour of 2016. I hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe, and thank you for watching.